Welcome to Joy of Business Radio, hosted by Joy of Business facilitators from around the world, with special shows from Simone Millicis, the founder and creator of Joy of Business. Are you bored or dissatisfied with your work or business? Joy of Business is an invitation to a completely new way of creating. Did you know your business and job can actually be fun and joyful? If what you are currently doing isn't working for you, listen into this show full of pragmatic tools from Access Consciousness, which change everything in business, from money to finance, staff, creativity, productivity, communication, and beyond. Joy of Business Radio, weekly on Ohm Times Radio. Hello and welcome everyone to Ohm Times Radio Show and talking about joy of business. So today's topic is Frantic to Flow, How to Get a Million Things Done with Ease. My name is Marnie Barenko and I am a joy of business facilitator. And just a little bit about my background. I started out actually as a preschool teacher and then moved from that to director level positions did that for about 10 years, and then I really was in a lot of different industries and always kind of in management-type positions, director-level positions, working in corporate America, all that good stuff. And what I can say about my life is that I lived life from a very frantic type of energy. I would get up in the morning with a to-do list a million miles long, wondering how I was going to get through it, knowing I possibly, there was no possible way that I could from parenting to business to life. I just sort of had this this uh, frantic way that I went about things. And it really created a lot of frustration in my world. It created a lot of overwhelm, a lot of just every the opposite of ease, the opposite of peace, the opposite of flow. And when I kind of look back at my life, I, I remember very clearly when I was in first grade, and up until the point that I was in first grade, I had the point of view that learning was fun, and I just kind of had this carefree, free-spirited way of going about life and going about learning, and one of the things that would happen every week in first grade is that we would have a spelling test, and on that spelling test, the teacher would give you the words, you know, you'd write down the word, and then anytime you missed a word, after the spelling test was over, you would have to go back and write the word out five times. Well, I did not see that as a problem at all. I never studied for the spelling test. I always missed words on the spelling test. But my point of view was no big deal. When the test is done, then I'll write out the words five times. Whatever I miss, then I'll know it. Bing, bang, boom, no problem. But my teacher had a very different point of view. <clears throat> and one day, she, uh, we had just taken a spelling test, and I missed words as I always did. And she went and she stood at the front of the room where there was this star chart. And honestly, I had never paid attention to the star chart, didn't realize the star chart was there. And she stood by the star chart and she started to run her finger down the names on the star chart. And she said, now everyone in this class knows, which wasn't true because I didn't know, but she said, everybody knows that when you take a spelling test and you get a star for your spelling test for getting all of the words correct the first time, then you get to put a star by your name. And she said, as she's running her finger down the list of names, she said, isn't it interesting, Marnie, that every child in this class has a star by their name except for you? When are you going to get things right the first time? When are you going to learn to get good gold stars? And I stood there, and in that moment, it was really like a tilt in my little happy world of, oh, I didn't realize this was a thing. My point of view, I'm learning the way that I learn, no big deal. Her point of view, point of view, it's about stars. It's about getting it right the first time. It's about having the right answer. It's about not making mistakes. And on that day, I traded my point of view for her point of view. I stopped seeing that it was okay to make mistakes. I stopped seeing that my way of learning and doing things was acceptable. And I went, oh, it's about gold stars. Oh, It's about performing. Oh, it's about doing it right, getting the right answer, not making mistakes. And from that point, from school all the way through school and then into my career and into my marriage and into raising kids, for a very long time, I functioned from the point of view, don't make mistakes, don't get it wrong, have the right answers, 
be the best performer, work your ass off and make sure, you know, make sure it works. And I got a lot of gold stars. I got a lot of recognition for the gold stars. And what I know is every morning that I would wake up and I would put my feet on the floor, I would take a deep breath like, here we go again. I honestly do not know if I have what it takes to get through the day. Honestly, do not know if I can make it through all of the things I need to get done. There's no possible way. This, this really frustrated, exhausting, not fun way of living life. So that thread of that performance and that having the right answer really ran through everything. And what it created, particularly in the corporate world for me and in the business world for me, was a lot of stress, a lot of trying to do it all by myself. It wasn't okay to ask for help. And just a lot of really pressure that I put on myself. And then I came across the tools of access consciousness. And I remember I was sitting one day when I first found out about it, I was sitting at my computer finding every possible thing I could find that was free to listen to from these this new thing that I hadn't heard of before. And Dr. Dane here, one of the founders of Access Consciousness, said this statement, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And I stopped, paused the, the recording that I was listening to, and I just sat there. And I actually started to write it down. All of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And then he went on to explain that glory was being you, basically, like that exuberant, happy, joyful expression of you being you. And I sat there going, that is not at all what my life is. Ease? Nope. More like stress and anxiety. Joy? Uh, no. More like depression and sadness and all of that kind of stuff. And me being me? <laughs> Heck no. It wasn't about me being me. It was about following the rules and doing what corporate America told me I should do, what the rules of parenting told me I should do, what the rules of being a good spouse told me I should do. So it was all about everybody else. There was not a sense of being me, not a sense of joy, not a sense of ease. And I remember there, sitting there thinking, wow, if I could actually wake up in the morning and have ease joy and glory as my reality, my whole life would be different. If I could actually go to work in the morning and have everything that I encountered come to me with ease and joy and glory, whoa, I could barely even perceive that possibility. There was a little bit of wouldn't that be wonderful, but it was so far from my reality that it was a bit hard to even comprehend it. And then with parenting and all of the things, my entire life, if it could show up with ease, joy, and glory, what a difference that would be. So I started that very day just to play with that. I thought, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. I'm just going to, I'm going to get up in the morning, and I'm going to say, all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory. And he suggested that we do that 10 times. So I did that 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night. And it was, it was a subtle difference, and I didn't notice it right away. But all of a sudden, something would show up, say, for example, at work, where the coworker would come in and normally where, where a conversation would get heated or confrontational, I all of a sudden found myself not going to the stress and the anxiety, not needing to fight, not going to that frantic, I've got to fix this and control this right now. And the second tool that I heard that same day was something called interesting point of view. And basically, it's just a way of looking at everything that you've decided is real and true and looking at it and saying to yourself, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. Because the thing is, our points of view create our reality. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you have the point of view that to have money, you have to work hard. Then what you end up having as your life experience is you work hard, you work hard, you work hard for every single penny that you get. So what this tool says is every time you notice a point of view about anything, about the problems of parenting, about the problems of business, about business is overwhelming and stressful, about my life is frustrating, about, you know, if you don't work hard, you don't have good things. Whatever the points of view are, you notice a point of view and you say to yourself, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. Interesting point of view, I have that point of view. And you keep saying it 
until you notice a shift in things. <clears throat> and as I started to do that, particularly with business, when I would get up in the morning and I would go to work and whatever situation would show up that I normally would do what I call the downward spiral to this place of total frantic frustration, stress, and overwhelm. And I would go, okay, you know, the payroll didn't get done. The person who's supposed to do payroll didn't do payroll. And this got missed. And where I would go into the frantic, I would go, interesting point of view. I have that point of view that I have to do X, Y, Z to fix this because whatever occurred. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. So between those two tools, that's where I started. All of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. And I really just began to say, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to practice with these two things and see what shows up. And what I found as I practiced those two things is that there was a whole different way that I was showing up in the business world. There was a whole different way I was showing up in life. And everything and everyone around me also started to show up different. And there was more of this sense in space of ease that I always wished for, that I had before I bought my first grade teacher's point of view. I was beginning to have that space back again, that space of being able to choose what worked for me rather than having to follow the rules and getting it right. And that shifted so much of the frantic energy I was functioning into more of a flow with life. So another thing that I really started to look at when I was playing more with some of the tools of access is how little I was including myself in the creation of my life. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that we have a lot of things impelled on us of what's important, what, what's of value, how we should be, what we should focus our time on, how much money we should have, how much is too much, how much is not enough. Pick any topic, pick any area of life. There's a lot of expectations. There's a lot of projections from others to you, from culture, from families, from the workplace. And then we put a lot of expectations and projections on ourselves as well. And so what we end up doing is actually creating our life based on what everybody else tells us is of value and based on the expectations and projections that we've decided are real, true, valuable, significant, important. And then we try to match those. We try to uh, do basically what we've decided we have to do. And we don't include ourselves in that creation. So I started to look at how I had really completely excluded me from my life. It was literally all about everyone else. It was literally all about pleasing the boss, pleasing all of the clients, pleasing everyone that I worked with. It was about pleasing my spouse. It was about pleasing my kids. It was about making sure that everybody else had what they need. Everybody else was taken care of. Everything was handled amazingly. And I didn't have a sense of me. So when we come back after this little break, we'll talk a little bit more about how to start to include you in the creation of your life. No one needs to have a money problem, especially you. Yeah, did you hear that? You. You have an unlimited and mostly unaccessed capacity to create money and a financial reality that works for you. Simone Millicis has a brand new book. It's called Getting Out of Debt Joyfully. And right now, when you go to gettingoutofdebtjoyfully.com, if you pre-order the book, you'll get a free online course. What if you can create money in ways no one else can? Just go to gettingoutofdebtjoyfully.com to get your copy today. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Aloha. My name is Jennifer O'Neill, and I'd like to invite you to come join me every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time for my show, Spirit Chat. Spirit Chat focuses on simplifying the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. 
I also teach different techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit realm and empower you on your own spiritual journey. So join me this Wednesday as I guide you through the spirit world. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. So welcome back. Today we're talking about going from frantic to flow, getting a million things done with ease. And where we left off was looking at the place where we don't actually include ourselves in the creation of our life, where it's all about everybody else and we're nowhere in the equation. So one one thing to look at and to start to ask yourself is what do I actually desire? If I were choosing for me, if I were including me in the creation of my life, what would I choose? And the funny thing is a lot of us have never stopped to even ask that question. So often when we're growing up, we are so impelled with everybody else's desires and what they've desired, decided is important that we don't actually even bother to ask. Or how many times as a kid, you know, like you, you went to the store and you got to pick out a toy and you were so excited about the toy for about an hour and then you go home and you're done with the toy and now you're asking for something else and your your parents are asking why you're so selfish and why can't you just be happy and I just bought you a toy an hour ago, why are you asking for something else? But in your world, there was this sense of limitless possibilities. There was a sense of there's always something else, there's always something more and you always desired the something more and for a while you asked for it. But after enough times of don't be so selfish and what's the matter of you and you shouldn't want that, you should want this and you should just be content and all of that kind of stuff, many of us give up that asking and many of us give up that willingness to ask and receive more and we sort of close in and stop and try to contain it. And so we at some point go even a step farther and we become completely unaware of what it is we actually desire because our whole life is navigated based on what everyone else has said we should create our life as. So would you be willing to start to look from a different perspective? Would you be willing, even if it's just the simple question of what do I desire as my life? Because here's the thing. When we're creating our lives based on the expectations, desires, values of everyone else, we are creating that frantic energy because we're going and we're going and we're doing and we're doing, but there's no inclusion of us. And so it, the, frantic, the franticness is inevitable. The, the frustration and the, and the stress is inevitable. So if you begin to look and just actually get clear on what is it that I desire as my life, and then as you have a sense of that, take that a step farther and say, if I was creating that, if I was creating, if I was choosing, if I was even demanding the life that I desire, what would I choose? And what action would I take today? And the more you start to know what you desire, the more you start to choose what you desire, then you're spending your energy, and not really spending it, but using your energy on things that are of value to you. You're, you're using your energy and your creation in the places that are actually congruent with who you are and what you be and what you desire for the world. And that takes far less time, action, and energy than doing all of the things that actually aren't congruent with you that are based on everyone else. So we all have a navigation system with how we function in this world, the way that we go through our day, the way that we create our life, the way that we choose, you know, who we're going to marry or if we're not going to marry and how we're going to raise kids and all this kind of stuff. And we have a navigation system that we have learned really, really effectively. And for some of us, 
it was like a re it was required that we followed the rules of the game. That's how we avoided the angry adults. That's how we avoided getting in trouble over here. That's how we sort of maintained a sense the best we could of a calmness and a peacefulness in our environment that probably wasn't was everything but that. So we learned how to navigate the world around us. We learned the rules of engagement and how to be really good followers of that so that we could have some sort of sense of security. So that, again, that's if it's not congruent with who and what you be, it takes a lot of energy to actually maintain it. So one of the things I would love to start to look at is something that is called the four elements of creation. And I, I got this from Gary Douglas, the other founder of Access Consciousness. And there are four elements of creation that he talks about as really a new navigation system. So looking at, here's what I've done to create my life so far, and it's worked to a certain extent, and have gratitude for that, and there's got to be something else possible. There's what if, what if creation could happen way more easy and way more fast and way more fun and way more congruent with me? And there's four elements that actually bring you to that. And the first element is question. So when you look at how, going back to my first grade example, and probably everybody listening to this has one to 2,000 examples of how we were taught that the thing that matters here is having the right answer. Get it right. Don't get it wrong. Don't mess it up. Have the answer. Always have the answer. And even greater and more important than that, have, have the right answer. And so we spend a lot of our lives looking for the right answer and trying to not be wrong. And that creates really this stuck state of never going beyond what we're currently choosing and never being able to have something different. So the first element of creation is about asking questions. And it's not about asking a question so that you can go find an answer. It's actually about asking a question so that you can see what else is possible that you've never been able to see. So in the asking of questions, it's about letting go of having answers. It's about letting go of having to get it right. So a great question that you can ask is, what else is possible that I haven't considered? And back to corporate America, I really started using this one a lot because I had a certain way that I managed people. I had a certain way that I ordered things. I had a certain way of going about doing all of the things that I did, and when something would come up, it was sort of just go to the autopilot of what you do. And instead of doing that, I started to look and go, huh, so here's what's showing up. Here's what I would normally do, or here's what I would normally decide or conclude. I wonder what else is possible. I wonder what else is possible that I've never considered. And I wonder if I let go of what I've already decided, what else might I know? So instead of going to the correct answers, going to a sense of curiosity, going to the sense of wonder, going to the space of question. So our brains do this really, really interesting thing. Whenever we decide that something is so, it actually only lets in the information that's going to match our decision. So let's just say you're a manager of people and you have a particular person who you find very challenging to work with because they always do whatever that thing is. Let's say they're always late. Let's say they always forget to turn in their time card or whatever the thing is. And so in your world, they always do that. And so there you are and you're sitting at your desk and let's say it's that they always come to work late and he, they come strolling in at 15 minutes past. Instead of going into your conclusion of this is what they always do, this is how they show up all the time, this is, this is just how it is, just start to ask the question, what else is possible? I wonder what else is possible. I wonder if there's something I could do or be different to change this. I wonder. And then you start to ask questions and then you start to have an awareness. Perhaps there's something that you can set up differently with that employee. Perhaps you need to fire them. There is no right answer. But if you go to what you've concluded, you will always and only get more of your conclusion. If you go beyond your conclusion and actually start to ask questions, then you bypass that little thing in your brain that says, I must match what this person has decided. They decided this, I must match that. I must only give them the information that matches what they've decided. 
when you ask the question, your brain has actually nothing to match because it isn't a concrete thing. It's a space of question, of what else, of wonder, of curiosity. There's nothing to match. So now the things that are right in front of you actually start to show up. Just a quick example, I travel a lot for work. I have kids. And I was really looking at, wow, sometimes they can come with me and sometimes not. And I need to have somebody come stay with them. And I would like it to be someone that I'm comfortable with. I'd like it to be someone that's fun for them. And I wonder who that could be. But I didn't start off with, I wonder who that could be. I started off with, I don't know anyone who can do this. There's nobody that I can think of who would actually, I would, would be someone I would ask to do this role. And so I went into all of the what won't work and who I don't know, and which is all decisions and conclusions and all of the things that I decided. There was zero question in my universe, and I couldn't see any possible solution. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, let's ask a question. What else is possible? wonder what it would take to find somebody. And all of a sudden, I had an epiphany of their drum instructor, who we see every single week, who they absolutely adore, they have tons of fun with, who I feel very comfortable with. He's been in my universe for two years, and I did not even consider him as someone to come stay with the kids because I was so locked into my points of view. I was not letting any new information in. And then when I asked the question, literally within just a very, very short time, I went, oh, yeah, drum teacher. And it was nowhere in my world. So the, the point is, even though we're so good at navigating our world on answers, conclusions, decisions, all of those kinds of things, we actually block out possibilities. We block out things that are right in front of us. We block out what we could actually know and choose when we have those answers and conclusions. So if you would like to start to create your life in a different way, start to ask questions. What else is possible? What other possibilities are there that I've never considered? So the second element of creation is this little thing called choice. And when you look at the old navigation system, it's not about choice. It's about what other people told you to value, what other people told you was important, what other people said you should create as your life and what you should choose. There were right choices, wrong choices, and you began, most of us, to navigate our life based on the values of other people based on what other people said is important. Then comes choice. And choice is all about looking at beyond, again, beyond what you've decided and concluded so that different possibilities can show up. And after the break, we will talk more about choice. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Putting the sun back in business. Wake up. Go to work, come home, watch TV, go to bed, repeat. Business, work, your job, hate it, bored, want to leave it? Or business, work, your job, fun, play, joy, fun. Which would you like to choose? You may not know this, but business, 
your job, work can actually be fun. Check out your business routine. Check out my three-part free video series on putting the fun back in business. Go to accessjoebusiness.com forward slash fun and put the fun back in business. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. From frantic to flow, getting a million things done with ease. So we were looking at choice. And a lot of us have in our navigation system, the old navigation system, the way we're used to functioning, the one that creates all the franticness, we have this very defined way that we have decided and bought into that we're supposed to create our lives. You know, I I look back to when I was graduating high school, there was nowhere in my universe that I would choose whether or not I wanted to get married. It's something that you did. You know, you graduated high school, you went to college, that wasn't a choice, you did that. And then you got married, that wasn't a choice, you did that. And you had a job that it didn't matter if you liked it or not, you needed a job that, you know, paid the bills and had a little extra money that you could settle into and do what you were supposed to do. And you have kids and then you work and you have kids and then you retire. And there were all of these things that were laid out as this is the way that it's been done forever and ever. And so this is the way you must do it. And I look back to going into college. There really truly was, and I get this is changing with the current generation. I'm almost 50, so a little bit different. But I get that in my world, there truly, it never occurred to me that I could look at any one of those things and actually choose what was going to work for me. It reminds me of a story of a lady who was making Christmas ham, and she cut off the ends of the ham and then put it in the pan, and the daughter said to her, well, why do you cut the ends of the ham off? And the mom's like, well, I don't know. I I did it because my my mom did it, and I never asked the questions what she did, so I just always cut off the ends of the ham. So they decided to call Grandma and said, hey, just wondering, why did you always cut the ends of the ham off before you put it into the pan? And she said, because my pan was too small. So Somebody chooses something for whatever the reason might be, and then if we don't ask any questions or we don't know we actually have a choice, we just fall into doing the same thing, and generation after generation after generation repeats things, and there's actually no question or choice involved in any of it. So with the the second element of creation, it's all about choice, and it's actually about infinite choice, and it's about being willing to look at all of the things in your life and actually choose what works for you. And most of us have not been empowered to know that that's even possible, that we can choose what works for us. And, you know, the thing is that choice creates awareness. And what a lot of us have been taught is we choose and then we're either rewarded because it was a good choice or punished because it was a bad choice. So rather than seeing choice as this amazing playground where we get to choose and then and then have awareness based on what shows up, We get really locked up and shut down around choice, afraid to make a choice because we don't want to screw it up, afraid to make choice because, well, it doesn't match other people's worlds, afraid to make choice because of fear of judgment or what other people will say. But when we begin to recognize and actually claim and take back, yeah, I have choice. That's actually the one thing that nobody can take away is I actually have choice, then we start to come out of all of the things that don't actually work for us and start to choose a life that that's fun and that is congruent with who we are. So, and the other thing I would love to say about choice is that choice isn't forever. Choice is good for 10 seconds. You choose something and then you know what? You can choose again and you can choose again and you can choose again and you don't ever stop choosing. You just get to choose and choose and choose. And as long as you don't go into judgment of you or any of your choices, And that is the key thing because we're so good at going into judgment of the choices we make. We look at the outcome of the choice and then we judge it as good or bad. But if you would be willing to move away from judging you and judging your choices, then you can open up to actually begin to see, oh, I chose this and this is what showed up. Oh, I made this choice over here and this is what it it created. And then 
you can choose again and again and again. So if you do judge you and your choices really, really harshly, one of my favorite things to say, another tool of access consciousness, is what's right about me that I'm not getting? Or if it's about a situation, what's right about this that I'm not getting? And when you ask that, it's really not about, okay, I've been judging all the things that are wrong with me. Now I'm going to judge all the things that are right. Or I've been judging all the things that are wrong with the situation. Now I'm going to judge and look for all the things that are right. It's not about that. But when you're stuck in judging you and judging your choices and judging what's showing up in your world, when you ask what's right about me or what's right about this that I'm not getting, it takes you out of the judgment. So once again, you're going beyond that place where your brain's decided something, and now the only thing, the only information that can come in is the information that confirms why you should be judging you and why you're wrong and why this is wrong. But when you ask what's right about this, what's right about me, now you've bypassed that brain and you've opened up into another space. You've gotten out of the autopilot and you're allowing something else to show up. And back to the, the 10 seconds of choice, like choice is only good for 10 seconds, please know that you can choose something, and if it isn't what you desire, then choose something else. And an example of that, my I have a 10-year-old son, and a couple years ago, he was attending a particular school, and we got an invitation for him to go to this like, you know, special class that only a few kids got to go to. It was sort of a sort of selective thing. And so I showed him the information. We went to the meeting to find out about the school, meet the teachers. And I said to him, you know, this is really your choice. I'm, I'm happy for you to choose whatever you get would be fun for you and what you, what you would like. And so he, he sat with it for a couple of days and then he said, mom, I want to try the new school. I said, all right, so let's try the new school. So we started the new school. It was at the beginning of the school year. And every day that I was picking him up, I knew it wasn't working for him. He was not his happy, bubbly self. There was like this weight on his shoulders. There was not the twinkle and sparkle in his eye. And about a week in, I started to just ask some more questions like, hey, how, how is this really actually going for you? And uh, not very good and, you know, whatever. And, and then finally, two weeks in, I said, sweetheart, you just seem to be more and more miserable every day. Is, is, you know, is there, would you like to choose something else? We can go back to your other school. We can choose a completely different school. There's all kinds of choices available. What would you like? And he, he just started to cry and he said, I would love to go back to my school, but I made this choice so I should stick with it. And I said, who told you that? I mean, where did you come up with that point of view? And he, he said, I don't know, but I just it seems like I made it. Now I should stick with it. And I said, no, you, no, you can always choose again. And so long story short, the very next day we went back to the school that he, that he had attended previously and he continued on to go there. So the thing is, though, where do we not give ourselves that same permission? Where do we have that same conclusion? Well, I chose this, so now I must stick with it. I made this choice, so now however it carries out, whatever occurs after this, I've got to stay with it. What if that wasn't true? What if you would be willing to choose, get the awareness from what you chose, and then choose again, and let go of what everyone else has told you is valuable and important, and actually started to choose for you? How different would your world be? So the third element of creation is possibilities. And we've already talked about when you ask a question and when you make choices, you start to open up to possibilities. And the thing about this, though, is it's limitless possibilities. It's infinite possibilities. And so often we get this idea that there's two, maybe three options available for any situation, like back to the school example for my son. You know, it could have been you either you have to stay here or go back to the old school, but that's not even true. You can stay here. You can go back to the other school. There's a charter. There's 10 charter schools. There's private schools. There's online schools. We could move somewhere else. There's all kinds of options, but we so often cut them off again because of what we've decided. And uh, I love my friend Brendan Watt, who facilitates uh, classes, choice of possibilities classes, business and different classes. I attended a choice of possibilities class with him. And the example that he used is like, say you walk into a room and from wall to wall, floor to ceiling are just tables filled with food, all kinds of different foods. And it's you know, like wide open buffet, go choose whatever you want to. But the only things you've ever allowed yourself to have are cereal and French toast. 
So you go have a little bit of cereal and you go have a little bit of French toast and you don't even see everything that's available, all of the infinite options that are around you because you know about French toast and you know about cereal. And, and again, when we decide that there's only one or two options, it's A or B, it's you know this one or that one, then even though there might be a whole lot of options available to us, we cannot see them. And a, kind of a pattern that I did, I have three sons, and from the time the first one was born, I would do this thing of it was time where I could go back to work, and at the time with my first son, I was a director of a preschool, and I was really not loving being at home all the time. I was super, super bored, but I had the point of view I either have to be a stay-at-home mom or be a career woman, either or, option A or option B. So I was going to do what I thought was the right thing, which was be a stay-at-home mom, and I would nearly lose my mind. I would be so freaking bored. And so then I would just, nah, I got to go back to work. I've got to do something. So I'd go back to work. And then I would spend every day consumed with guilt of what a terrible person I was. I wasn't giving my child enough attention. And I should be content just to stay at home. So then I'd stop working. And I'd go to the full-time mom thing until I was going crazy. And then I'd go back to work. Did it with my first son did it with my second son, and then my third son was born quite a few years later, and I just went, there's got to be more than stay at home or go to work. There's got to be something else available, and this is actually before I came across Access Consciousness, before I knew to ask what else is possible, but energetically, I was asking what else is possible. Energetically, I was saying, wait a minute, there's got to be more than one or two options, and so what started to happen as I really went beyond that conclusion of one or the other, and I was willing to not feel guilty and actually see what else was available, then I started, I went back as I was a general manager of a company and I went back to work, but I was working from home three days. And, and then shortly after that, I was offered another position, which was full time at home. And so all of a sudden I created this whole new reality where I got to be home with my kids, plus director level position, making really good money for a company, all from the space of home. But what opened the door to that reality being possible was I got out of option A or option B and I asked a question. I got out of there's only one or two ways or maybe three ways that this can be done. And I went, huh, if I wasn't concluding that this was all that was available, what would I know and what could show up? So would you be willing to give yourself choice? And would you be willing to let go of deciding that choice is either right or wrong, good or bad, and actually just allow yourself to choose. See what shows up. Ask questions. Choose again. Ask a question. Make a choice. Limit the possibilities. And then just choose and choose and choose and keep choosing. So when we come back, we will be on uh, the fourth element of creation, which is contribution. What do you hate about business and do you want to change it? If you don't want to change anything about your job or business, stop listening. You're all good. If you'd like to have money just for the fun of it and stop the negative self-talk, check out Joy of Business. This is about knowing what you know about business and creating more than you can imagine. Access Joy of Business 101 classes offered around the world. Go to accessjoybusiness.com forward slash 101. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. 
a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. So we're continuing our conversation on From Frantic to Flow, Getting a Million Things Done with Ease. And we've been looking at the four elements of creation, which are question, choice, possibility, and contribution. And so we're picking up with contribution. Contribution is an, is an interesting one. Really, this reality has a very impelled sense of scarcity. And what I mean by that is there's this really this idea that if you don't actually look at it and, and ask a question about it, you might find you're buying into, even though you've not thought about it. But there's this idea that there's not enough to go around. So that there's a lack, there's a scarcity, and there's also this idea that some of us win and some of us lose. So if we're functioning from that as the platform of the foundation which we're creating in our life, then can you just really get how in the workplace you would function in a very frantic, driven performance energy because there's not enough to go around and somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose. So, I mean, how how much do you see that if you've been in – Corporate, corporate America, corporate whatever, corporations around the world, business around the world. And as Simone Millis, founder of Joy of Business, says, if you wake up in the morning, you're in business because your life is, is your business. So if you're functioning from that scarcity and somebody wins, someone loses, what does that actually create in every single area of your life? And in the work world, it, it often creates this, you know, really pushing and being driven to get ahead, climbing on top of people, got to be the best, got to get those gold stars, got to get them the first time. Otherwise, I'm going to be that one that that uh, loses and someone else is going to win. So the other thing that this scarcity and someone wins, someone loses creates is, is a fighting against each other. It's a repelling of each other. And it's the sense of, well, there's not, it's not enough for all of us. Like there's not enough to go around. There's not enough for all of us. And it creates this give and take. So you're either the giver or you're the taker. And sometimes you give and give and give, and then you're like, that's it. It's my turn to take. But there's, again, it's that fighting of who's going to get it, who's not going to get it, who's going to be in and who's going to get left out. And it really just does the opposite of creating a world that works, creating a business that works, creating a family that works, creating a life that works. So that's the old navigation system, scarcity, give and take, lack, not enough to go around. I must win, otherwise I'll lose. And the, the new navigation system of the four elements of creation is contribution. And contribution is like the simultaneity of gifting and receiving and, and the platform from which it's built is very different from give and take, very different from scarcity and not enough. It's actually based on the platform and the foundation of infinite possibilities, abundance. There's plenty to go around. There's more than enough to go around. When we don't separate, when we don't fight against, when we actually include everyone and everything and we don't exclude anyone or anything, there's more than enough to come to go around and everybody gets to be a part of it. And when you function from that space, there's the simultaneity of gifting and receiving. So everywhere in your world where you functioned from trying to get ahead because the underlying lie is that there's not enough to go around, would you be willing to do interesting point of view? I have that point of view. Interesting point of view. I think there's not enough to go around. Interesting point of view. I believe more in scarcity and lack than I do in abundance and more than enough. And as you begin to shift your point of view to include and not to separate, then instead of having to give, 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 sacrifice, 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 make it about everybody else, 
you're gifting, which means you're contributing, and at the same time, you're receiving the contribution of others. So when you're, when you're coming from the not enough to go around, you're fighting against others, you're putting up your walls, it's all about your effort, it's all about performance, it's all about pull yourself up by the bootstraps and soldier on. And how much do you have to have walls and barriers in place to function in the world in that way? And when you have walls and barriers in place, you're not actually receiving all of the amazing gifts in the people and in the things that are around you every single day that are looking to contribute to you. One of the things that Gary Douglas, founder of Access Consciousness, says is that every molecule in the universe is looking to contribute to you. So when your walls and barriers are up, when you're functioning from the point of view that you have to do it all by yourself and that it's all up to you, you're not actually able to receive the contribution of the molecules that desire to give to you every day. So just kind of overview again of the old navigation system that so many of us are familiar with in business, in life, in every single area. It all starts with having to get the right answer, and then it's all about looking at what other people value and say it is important and mimicking that. It's all about limited options. It's all about choice A, A or B, and it's all about giving and taking, fighting for survival, not enough to go around. And can you see that when that is the way that you function in life, when that is the way you navigate business, when you navigate parenting, you navigate relationship, you navigate anything in life, can you see how that creates this frantic energy and we live our lives from it because sometimes we don't know we don't have we have another option, but we do have another option. And that other option is the four elements of creation where you can ask a question and then you can choose and then you can become aware of all of the possibilities and all of those possibilities then are in this space of contribution of gifting and receiving where there is no separation, where everything's included, everyone's included, nothing is excluded, nothing is left out. And when you begin to live your life from those four elements of creation, the ease, the joy, the space that opens up, you are included in the creation of your life and all of those things that make life way more fun actually begin to open up and become available to you. And the funny thing is, whereas you used to wake up in the morning with a mile-long to-do list that you just knew you could never get through because there was just no way that you were going to tick off all of those boxes, when you start to use the elements of creation and live your life from that, you are able to get way more done than you were ever able to before. Because instead of using energy to fight, instead of using energy to follow the things that are not you, instead of using energy to actually go against who and what you are in favor of choosing somebody else's point of view, somebody else's reality, somebody else's life, all of that energy and creation and infinite possibility, all of you, all of who and what you be is used to actually create from an entirely different space. And now you are able to get more things done than you ever imagined possible and have like more energy as a result because of that contribution of that gifting and receiving. So if this is at all familiar to you, if you have lived in that space of stress and frantic and overwhelm and sadness and everything else, please know that something else is possible. And please know it doesn't have to be hard work to, to begin to create that change. So if you would be willing to just every day wake up in the morning and say all of life comes to me with ease and joy and glory, if you would be able and willing, if you would choose to look at every point of view that comes up about how things are hard work or about how stressful this is or whatever, whatever point of view, money, business, doesn't matter. But if you'd be willing to look at it and go, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. If you would be willing then to also just ask questions, what else is possible? How does it get any better than this? If I wasn't concluding how this has to go or what this house has to look like, what would I know? What would I choose? then you can begin to source your life 
from an entirely different place. And what I can tell you is that I have gone from that space of literally not knowing when I would wake up in the morning how I was going to get through the day, literally so overwhelmed, exhausted continuously, to waking up in the morning and going, oh, it's a new day. I wonder what I'm going to create today. I wonder who I'm going to talk to today. I wonder what action is required of me today. And I wonder what else is possible. I wonder what future I'm creating. And the ease, joy, and glory that I had no idea if my little experiment of saying that 10 times in the morning and 10 times at night was going to work, that ease, joy, and glory is my reality. Does that mean that I always get it right? Nope. Does that mean that I don't sometimes kind of kick back into, you know, having to have the right answer or looking for the result or looking for a conclusion? I do. And when I catch it, I no longer have to judge myself. I can ask what's right about me that I'm not getting. I can ask what's right about this that I'm not getting. And then I choose again and I choose again and I choose again. So there is an entirely different reality possible for all of us. And I'm willing to guess if you are listening to this that you actually know that or you wouldn't still be here listening. So what is it that you actually know about business? What is it that you actually know about money? What is it that you actually know about relationship and creating the life you desire the way that you desire it? So anywhere you've been invalidated by someone else's point of view, anywhere you did what I did, which was had a point of view that was working for me, and traded it for someone else's point of view, would you be willing to take back your awareness, your knowing, your choice, your potency? Would you be willing to empower you to know that you know and make another choice and in so doing move from frantic to a peaceful, joyful, ease-filled flow in your life?